you will visit an exhibition dedicated to Carlo Basilico, a painter born in Rancate, Mendrisio, Ticino in 1895. An exhibition that opens with a self-portrait from 1921 and ends with his last self-portrait from 1962. The internal thematic and stylistic path between the two self-portraits is mapped out. You will find six groups of eight works each, arranged in chronological order, showing the stylistic changes and the variety of techniques that characterize the painter's work. Group 1, an unusual colorfulness. Group 2, the expressive accentuation of color and signs. Group 3, tones of Lombardy, that is warm and delicate colors. Group 4, in the family, the lowering of tones and compactness of forms dominate. Group 5, genres and techniques, shows the variety of techniques used by Basilico. Group 6, brightness and color enjoyment. The self-portrait you see here is the first surviving self-portrait of Carlo Basilico. He painted it in 1921, when he was 26 years old, was about to become a father, and had been married for a year to Irma Prada, the daughter of Pietro, the owner of an established painting business based in Chiasso, where he worked and also held a managerial position. He was responsible for ornamentation, that is for all decorative or painterly interventions, whether with frescoes or dry painting, on the exterior or interior walls of villas, houses, churches, and chapels, as was customary at the time. A task that was to increase from 1926, after the death of his father-in-law, and which from then on would rest entirely on his shoulders. This meant that he had to shift his artistic quest to his days off and the winter months, that is, to the fringes of his work. The self-portrait we are looking at here is an indicator of this. He has a determined look, a strong-willed demeanor, but there is perhaps also something else. It can be seen the moment he turns his head and senses something that makes him a little uneasy. It can be seen in the seriousness of his face in the intensity and fixity of his gaze, in the concentration of his thoughts, in the wrinkles of his closed lips, in his tense, raised neck. In short, there is a tension running through him as if something is troubling him, presumably the growing obligations in connection with family and work, but perhaps also a shadow that casts itself over his future as an artist. Because, and he knows this very well, a good part of his fate as an artist is at stake in the decade ahead of him. But Basilico does not lower his gaze. He is determined to move forward, knowing full well what awaits him. Briefly, this is not just a physiognomic portrait, but also a moral portrait, a look inwards that is then directed forwards. Gate to Villa Prada, 1920. This is the first artwork of Group 1, an unusual colorfulness. What is striking in Carlo Basilico's painting from the very first works is an unusual colorfulness that plays a different tune from the artistic context of the 1920s, both in the canton of Ticino and in neighboring Lombardy and Italy, the traditional place of training and point of reference for many Ticino artists. These were trained in Milan at the Brera Academy of Art, while Basilico studied in Turin. At the time, Turin was strongly influenced by French painting. While in Italy, the Novecento and magical realism tended towards solid, composed forms and muted colors, in other words, a return to the tradition of the 14th and 15th centuries, in Basilico's work we see an unusual color scheme that clearly dominates the drawing a color that is applied directly to the painting ground in its purity, with quick strokes without having been mixed on the palette beforehand, and often with a counterpoint to emphasize the play of light and shadow. 
Proof of this is the painting we are looking at now, which shows his attention to the finer aspects of daily life, namely, a gate. The gate of Villa Prada, taken at close range as the last ray of sunlight falls on it. This creates the delicate reflections of light, the splashes of color, the pastel tones, the colored shadows and the dotted brush strokes that take us back to the confines of a light-filled and fringed impressionism. Colors that build up the picture and precede the drawing. However, the expressiveness of the brush strokes soon increased in his painting, becoming more intense, more durable and longer, and the color palette also expanded, sometimes showing brighter tones, as in the painting In the Fields from 1923 presented here, in which blue, violet and orange tones lend the picture a post-impressionist note. This is a clear sign that Basilico's painting does not stand still, but continues to develop. Winter Dusk, 1930. This is the first artwork of Group 2, the expressive accentuation of color and sign. Towards the end of the third decade, Carlo Basilico's life was marked by a series of tragic events, and not just in his private life. The deterioration of the socio-political and economic situation, not just in Europe but worldwide, with the stock market crash and the subsequent crisis of 1929, which also severely affected the company's activities. Then there was a very personal event, the death of his little son Pietro in June of the same year, just a few months after his birth. All of this has an impact on Carlo Basilico's art and leaves its mark. At the end of the third decade, his painting underwent a clear transformation moving ever closer to expressionism, as shown by the accentuation of both the colors and the gestural signs in his paintings. And yet, his gaze remains essentially influenced by French rather than Italian painting. What one sees is a winter twilight, but here is nothing of the clear winter evenings with snow on the distant peaks illuminated by the setting sun. Here, Large, energetic brush strokes in white and violet color, but of unusual expressiveness, build up the whole picture, climbing up the mountain which rises like a wall to the sky, almost closing off the field of vision and keeping the viewer trapped on this side of the mountain. A painting of such expressive power and novelty is unique in the context of the canton of Ticino in the 1930s, it is no longer just about the color, but also about how the painter wields the brush, that is, the force that he applies and transfers to the sheet, to the canvas. So, it's about how the brush stroke is used to build up an image. As you can see in this painting, the artist deliberately dispenses with details to expressively transfer the feeling of the experience into the painting instead.
From the Edge of the Forest, 1938. This is the first artwork of Group 3, Tones of Lombardi, Warm and Delicate Colors. After overcoming the difficult times of the 1930s, Basilico left behind the dramatic tones and expressive emphasis on signs and colors of his earlier production and turned to a flatter, more discursive figuration that corresponded to the different spirit of art that was then on the rise both in neighboring Italy and in Ticino. His gaze now turned to Italy. Not only do the tones and colors of his landscapes now become more Lombard, with a palette of greens, browns, and Sienese tones, but the constructive structure of the paintings is also more orderly and takes into account the depth of perspective that was sometimes hidden in the earlier paintings. Here, however, but also in comparison to the warm and soft color palettes of his earlier paintings, such as The Gate of Villa Prada, the painting shows in its complexity more subtle and softer, almost wadded hues with green, bluish, yellow, or pink reflections that connect everything to the distant horizon. These are often landscapes that start from a foreground in backlight or shadow and extend like a funnel to the hilly elevations at the end of the scene, interrupted here and there by villages, vineyards, and farms. The brush has lost the sharpness of the strong, expressionist strokes and moves lightly from one point to another of the painting, spreading delicate strands of color and sometimes deliberately leaving the ground visible, which thus becomes an active part of the painting. Above all, the painter achieves the effect of a vibrant atmosphere that pulsates everywhere and permeates the entire scene, it starts with the clarity of the air and continues with shaded lights through the reflections of the different colors. Basilico reveals here all his love for the gentleness of the landscape that is most familiar to him and which is also the one worked by man, proof of a deep relationship and a rediscovered harmony with his land and with himself. In the Family, 1936. This is the first artwork of Group 4. In the Family, lowering of tones and compactness of forms. The theme of family and portraits of family members are among Carlo Basilico's recurring motifs. In this case, the artist's elderly mother, his wife Irma, can be seen knitting and their 14-year-old daughter reading. It is therefore an intimate moment in family life. The composition of the scene is carefully thought out to create an inner circle in the picture that runs parallel to the outer forms, a certainly not accidental choice that helps to express the sense of unity that characterizes family life. Even in the stillness of the individual figures, one senses the closeness combined with an innate calm, a sense of order, serenity, and inner peace that drives the skillful development of the painting which leads from the dark dress of the old mother to the blue dressing gown of the daughter to the more intense and luminous colors of the woman in the foreground in front of the window. This picture is a vivid example of the so-called return to order documented in the group of works you will see here. 
a return to order that spread throughout Europe in the interwar period. The most obvious characteristics of this movement are the volumetry and compactness of the drawing, the reduction of color tones, and the order of the compositions. In reality, the repertoire of portraits that Basilico created over the years is much larger and more differentiated, not only in terms of form and compositional cuts, but also with clear transitions from close-ups to shots in the domestic space, usually next to a window through which the light of the landscape falls or the landscape itself. Basilico experiments and uses various techniques to achieve different effects. The flexibility of his drawing ranges from oil to watercolor, from charcoal pencil to pastel, to graphite or colored pencil, where he sometimes shapes the features of a face with just a few highly concentrated strokes. Still Life, 1950. This is the first artwork of Group 5, Genres and Techniques, to illustrate the variety of techniques used. Carlo Basilico always cultivated many interests, from music to reading, from stage design to design, even sculpture and architecture, which he cultivated in the last part of his life. As an artist, he mainly worked in three genres, portrait painting, landscape painting, and the occasional still life. It is striking that he not only varied the poses and frames of the different motifs, but also the techniques. This can be seen in the following artworks. As a talented color artist with a remarkable command of the medium, he was always interested in trying out new, expressive possibilities. He was very flexible and alternated between oil, tempera, watercolor, ink, pastel, charcoal, and pencil drawings. He often mixed several techniques in one work. Sometimes he captured the figure of a relative in an experienced space through subtle strokes that were barely hinted at or saturated with muted lights. At other times, however, he captures the essence of a face through very energetic strokes in charcoal, as if they were knife marks on a white sheet of paper. An entirely different approach is the use of watercolors, which are not spread on the sheet in strokes or marks, but in patches, light, transparent, watercolored to the point of dissolving, to the point of dispersion. It is always a matter of a few brush strokes, executed quickly and precisely, neglecting the detail and focusing instead on the synthesis, the gaze, the harmony of the colors, which does not allow for any possibility of correction. Alongside the family portraits, Basilico's landscape painting is the great protagonist of his art, which is closest and most familiar to him. He is enchanted by the simple beauty of nature, pre-Alpine nature, it must be said. His painterly eye caresses even the most modest and familiar landscapes of the Mendriciotto, and the views that surprise him on his Sunday walks to the Serpiano, or into the Campagna Adorna, or the Muggio Valley. He does not sublimate nature in front of him, but reflects himself in it, projects his feelings into it, 
and projects them into the colors of the seasons, into the scent of spring, into the lights of sunset, or even into the mists of winter that are now coming. Terrace After the Rain, 1952. This is the first artwork of Group 6, Brightness and Color Enjoyment. Towards the end of the war, Carlo Basilico suffered from severe visual impairment. An accident at work with quicklime had injured his eyes and greatly impaired his artistic activity. In the 1950s, however, he recovered, and his painting regained the luminosity and colorfulness of the past. Now he focused on what he experienced in his daily life, especially in his home, as in this painting, a view of the terrace shortly after a rain shower. Although it is an everyday and modest motif, it does not correspond to the artistic goals he has set himself. There are two aspects that particularly stand out. Firstly, using dry white brush strokes on a gray background to directly depict the reflections of the celestial light mirrored in the pools of water to bring the painting to life and avoiding the powerless description of a neat drawing to instead emphasize the impulse and movement of the paint. Secondly, it is the internal chromatic variations that give the painting its compositional structure rather than the rapidly rough-hewn forms of the objects. This painting is constructed diagonally across two parts, the foreground and the background, which differ well in their touches, but at the same time relate well to each other and hold together firmly. This confirms the constants of Carlo Basilico's art, which aims to unite diversity and unity and not to fatigue the painting by overworking it to preserve the authenticity of the gaze and the freshness of the emotion. In fact, he worked quickly and did not go back to his pictures. He painted directly in front of the motif, which he either succeeded or discarded. This was a necessity that was also linked to the rhythm of his profession, as he had to work in his free moments. But basically, it was also a decision based on artistic motivation. Preserving the immediacy of the first glance always has a great influence on the appreciation and judgment of those who view and evaluate the work of art.
Carlo Basilico portrayed himself several times in the course of his life. This is perhaps his last self-portrait. Whereas in the picture you saw at the opening of the exhibition, both in the scenery and in the lines of the drawing, you saw the depiction of a strong-willed 25-year-old determined to face up to life's potential difficulties. Here we are dealing with a man who seems to be taking stock of life with a downcast, thoughtful, and confused gaze, of a life that was certainly well spent, but is now shrouded in a shadow of apprehension. So we see that each of his self-portraits is not only a physiognomic record of the passing of time, which leaves its mark on the face, in the wrinkles, in the furrows on the forehead, but is always also an existential and moral examination of himself. In other words, a visual translation of a feeling of existence, and here also a waking dimension. In fact, you can read in it a kind of inner concern, perhaps even bitterness due to the progression of the disease. So much so that even the form of the face seems to crumble into a kind of informal painting, characterized by nervous, insistent, and prickly signs. In short, it is as if the artist wanted to hold something together that is in danger of falling apart or knows that it could fall apart. Ultimately, it is always the same intention that has characterized his entire artistic work, that is, a constant search for visions and feelings, a holding together of things that goes beyond the beautiful form, the description, the variety of formal solutions, the genres and the techniques, in order to tell us in the end always and only the same thing, namely the deep connection that the artist had with his country, with his world. Basilico did not paint for others. He painted first and foremost for himself, to find himself in the forms and colors of his painting, a painting that is usually bathed in a bath of luminous freshness. It is not a question of painting life, but of bringing painting to life. A quote from Pierre Bonnard. This video exhibition was conceived by the historian and art critic, Claudio Guarda, who also selected the artworks and wrote the commentary.